It was late afternoon when I finally pulled into Seattle. I got off the ferry from West Seattle to Vashon Island and was driving down the two-lane road looking for my hotel. I made the reservations a couple of days ago as I left Denver. The long drive had given me lots of time to think. Catching my wife with my best friend, Joe, was heartbreaking. But my marriage and the relationship with my best friend was now behind me. I had accepted a new job as a reporter at a small town paper outside of Seattle and was looking forward to starting over. My car was jam-packed with all my belongings and I was scouting for the small hotel on the coast of the island that would be the launching point of my new job and my new life. Off in the distance I saw a bicyclist. She was standing up on the pedals really working hard to get up the hill. I envied her determination as I had let myself go the last few years. An unhappy marriage and a diet based solely on fast food will do that. I was too wrapped up in work and my wife was always too busy to make anything. She never said what she was busy doing but I guess it had something to do with Joe after catching them together. I tossed the burger bag in the back seat as I passed her and vowed to try to eat healthier in the future. She was just cresting the hill as I passed and I waved to give her some encouragement. I could see the sweat streaming down her face but it didn't hide her wonderful smile and she waved back. The next car that passed was weaving all over the place. He was obviously drunk and looked to be searching for another drink as he went by. I checked the rear view mirror in horror as he swerved into the other lane. The girl on the bike had no chance. She flipped over the car and landed in the ditch. I dialed 911 to report the accident as I spun the car around. The drunk never stopped. I couldn't get his license plate number, but I think he knew something had happened because he sped away real fast. I jumped out of my car and cradled her head in my arms. She was unconscious and barely breathing. I could hear the sirens in the distance. The emergency personnel took a quick look at her, scooped her into the ambulance, and sped off. The police arrived and took my information. I couldn't give them much, just my name and the local hotel that had my reservation. They offered me some wipes to clean up, but I was in a daze. They took some measurements of the skid marks, loaded the bent-up bike into their car and before I knew it they were gone. I cleaned up as best I could and drove the rest of the way to the hotel. I checked in and took my overnight bag to the room. Even though I was going to stay there for a while I didn't have the energy to unpack anything else. I couldn't get my mind off that girl and the tragic thing that had happened. I looked up the phone number to the hospital to check on the girl. The nurse wouldn't tell me anything unless I was family. I explained that I had seen the accident and had tried to help her. I asked what room she was in and if I could at least send her some flowers. After a long pause, the nurse quietly apologized and told me she wouldn't need any flowers. I silently put the phone back on the hook without saying a word. I went into the bathroom and quietly undressed. Turning on the shower as hot as I could stand it, I just stood there silently sobbing letting the water run down my back. I don't know how long I was in there but it was well after dark by the time I had emerged. My skin was all pink and wrinkled. I fell into the bed and had a terrible night's sleep. I tossed and turned. I couldn't get the face of that girl out of my head. When I woke up, I called my new job and spoke to the receptionist that answered. I told her about my first day in town. She assured me to take as much time as I needed to settle in and would talk to the editor for me. Most of my work was done by telecommuting anyway. She said he asked me to do as much as possible over the computer and promised my job would be there when I was ready. I walked down to the front desk and asked the clerk if she could recommend a good place for breakfast. Honey, she said, you must really have been tired last night. Most places stopped serving breakfast hours ago. I looked at the clock behind the wall. It was 1.30 in the afternoon. I left and walked down the block looking for a place to eat. Just because it was afternoon didn't mean a guy wasn't still hungry. I found the local burger joint and ordered a double cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke. I had hungrily devoured the meal and was walking back to the hotel when my phone rang. 
It was the home rental agency I had been dealing with during my move. I told them yes, I had made it into town and would call them in a couple of days. I just wasn't in the mood to go house hunting yet. I still couldn't get the image of that girl out of my head. After two days of scanning the paper and watching the news on TV for any kind of information on the accident or the girl I decided to call the police and inquire about the accident. The desk sergeant assured me there was an ongoing investigation. But, if you if you want my advice, he said. I'd just let it go. I tried to ask him what he meant by that but he just hung up. Something didn't sit well with me. It wasn't right. A girl had died at the hands of a drunk and it didn't even make the news. At the very least Mad should have gotten involved. My mind was spinning in circles. My phone rang and woke me out of a perfectly good afternoon nap. I still wasn't sleeping well and those naps seemed to help. It was the rental agency again. We just had an opening on a lovely little beach house that was ready to be rented. You must come down right away. The annoying voice said. This isn't going to last long. It's in your price range and has great views to the water. I tried to put her off, but she was persistent. I got up, splashed some water on my face to try to wake up and brushed my hair. I looked in the mirror. It had been days since I had shaved and several months since my last haircut. Oh well, it's not like this was a date. I said to the mirror. I grabbed my keys and left. I found the house with no problems. It was at the end of a long dead-end road right on the beach. Hi. You must be Robin, said the short little lady, almost running up to the car. My name is Lucy. Lucy Vaughn. We spoke several times on the phone. I shook the extended hand and smiled, trying to look pleased. We walked up to the porch and she opened the door. The place smelled nice. A bit feminine but clean. She walked me through the living room to the kitchen and out onto the back patio talking the entire time. The kitchen is all up to date and just look at the views to the water. They're unbelievable. I walked back into the living room. The place is being rented just as it sits. Fully furnished. Something felt like it was pushing me but I just couldn't put my finger on it. Lucy was still talking and moving back into the kitchen. Right down to the dishes, pots, and pans. I wandered down the hall toward the bedrooms. One bedroom was sparsely furnished and nothing special. Just a bed, dresser, and a small nightstand. The other room was immaculate. The feather bed was neatly made with white silk sheets and a beautiful green flower lace comforter. The furniture all matched and was a perfect white with a matching flower trim. Something made me feel at home here and I smiled for the first time in days. Lucy was still talking when I returned to the living room. I'll take it. Lucy stopped in mid-sentence with her eyebrows raised. Well, okay then. Let's go back to the office and we'll fill out the rental agreement. I opened my checkbook and started writing. That won't be necessary. I'll give you first and last month's rent and I'll sign the rental forms now. She was still talking and shuffling the papers when I ushered her out the front door. I turned and sat in the overstuffed chair looking out towards the water. Something was telling me this was my new home and I smiled quietly for the second time. I don't know how long I sat there looking around the room but something felt out of place. It took me a while to figure it out. It was me. The house smelled clean and fresh and I hadn't showered in days again. I jumped up and walked into the bathroom, closing the door behind me. I turned on the water and took a long hot shower. I found the soap and a washcloth and started to scrub myself. I didn't stop until every inch of my body was clean. My skin was pink but it felt nice and clean. There was a bottle of shampoo in the corner. I dumped a large puddle in my hand and washed my hair. It smelled like fresh flowers but I didn't care. I just needed to be clean. I even used the conditioner I found with the shampoo since my hair was so long. Stepping out of the tub I grabbed a towel that was folded on the rack. I dried myself off and turned to look in the mirror. 
It was all fobbed over so I grabbed a hand towel and wiped a hole in the mist. I felt clean but the image was still a mess. I grabbed a brush from the counter and ran it through my hair. I was amazed at how easy the brush went through the knots and made a mental note to continue using the conditioner. I usually part my hair in the middle but something told me this time to part it just off to the left side. I didn't put it back into its usual ponytail. I left it down and it seemed to float around my shoulders. I had planned on letting my beard grow when I left Denver but now I hated the idea. I grabbed the razor out of the tub and shaved myself clean. I even lathered up and shaved a second time to make sure I didn't miss anywhere. The reflection in the mirror was still me but it was a new me. A clean me. Staring at the new, clean me in the mirror, I broke into a smile for the third time that day. Only then did I realize that I had forgotten to unpack my car. The only clothes I had were the dirty ones crumpled up on the floor. Something told me that as clean and fresh as I had become, I shouldn't put those clothes back on. I saw a robe on the back of the door and held it up. It was a long flowing robe with wide sleeves. It smelled like baby powder. That same feeling told me I shouldn't put it on unless I smelled that way also. I located the container on the counter next to the mirror and used the softball to dust myself all over. I pulled on the robe and it just glided up over my shoulders. I flipped my hair out from under the robe and tied the belt. Opening the door, I cautiously looked up and down the hall. No one else is home, silly come on out. I jerked my head around. Who's here? There was no answer. I pulled the knot tight on the robe and walked into the living room looking around. Satisfied that I was indeed alone, I walked down the hallway into the master bedroom. I wasn't going to get caught going out to the car to unpack in that robe with all those voices I was hearing. I opened up the closet and found a pair of jeans and a sweater. I stepped in the legs and pulled them up. They were a little tight but I managed to get them buttoned and zipped. I found a sweater that was a bit large but fit. I looked in the mirror. The jeans said Lady Wrangler and had some fancy stitching and the sweater was a bit feminine but it was better than the robe. I needed a pair of shoes to go out and unpack. There were lots of shoes in the bottom of the closet. I looked for something I could walk in. I found a pair of loafers with a small heel and tried them on. I thought I heard a giggle from behind me and spun around. I almost fell on my face with those heels on and caught myself on a stand-up mirror in the corner. I paused and stared at my reflection with my mouth open. Not bad, sweetie. You're clean up nice. I looked around the room. Where did that voice come from? Hello? Who's here? I didn't want to be seen dressed like this. Relax. I already said that you're cute. The voice giggled. Besides you're going to need those to unpack your car unless you plan on going outside naked. Another quick search of the house turned up nothing. I walked back into the bedroom and found the robe folded neatly on the bed. I hadn't left them that way. I looked around. This was weird. All right, what's going on? Who's here? I looked around the room. Nothing. I peeked through the curtains of the front door. Nobody was around and my car was the only one in the driveway. I cautiously stepped out onto the front porch. There were no other houses visible through the trees or down the lane. I unpacked as fast as I could. I made it back inside and closed the door. I gave a sigh of relief and looked at the large pile of boxes stacked along the wall. I picked up two boxes headed back to the bedroom. I put down the boxes and paused looking around. For some reason this didn't feel right. I picked them back up and carried them into the spare bedroom. I stacked them in the closet and walked out for some more. Several hours later I was all unpacked but the way the house was furnished, I didn't need most of my old stuff. The rest of it ended up back in the closet of the spare bedroom. I think that's a better place for that stuff, too. What? I said out loud looking around. I'm going crazy. This is weird. Who's there? No answer. I was all sweaty and my clothes stunk. 
I undressed and tossed the clothes into the hamper. I turned on the water in the tub. The last shower made me feel so wonderful, I wanted another one. But before I could step into the shower, something changed my mind. I closed the tub drain and reached for some lavender bath beads. I read the directions, dumped double the amount required into the bath, and let it fill almost to the rim before I turned the water off. The aroma coming from the tub was unbelievable. I eased into tub and closed my eyes. Ladies don't have hairy legs. I was getting used to hearing that voice in my head. I reached for the razor and lifted my leg out of the tub. Starting at the ankle, I worked up to my thigh, making sure I didn't miss any spots. I switched to the other leg and did the same thing. I marveled at how smooth they felt. I also shaved what few chest hairs I had and then shaved under my arms. Putting the razor down, I luxuriated in this new experience. As the water cooled, I decided it was time to get out. I dried off and wrapped the towel around my chest this time instead of my waist. I wrapped another one on my head covering my hair. I walked over to the mirror and wiped another hole in the mist. Leaning in closer, I studied my face for the first time. I seemed to be looking at it with a different pair of eyes this time. Without thinking, I opened the drawer and pulled out a pair of tweezers. Studying my face I started plucking. I moved back and forth from eyebrow to eyebrow until they were arched high above my eyes. Stepping back from the mirror, my eyes opened wide. What had I done? And what had possessed me to do it? I looked more closely at my face. There was no way to return them to male mode. I walked back to the bedroom and looked back into the mirror. I slowly opened the towel examining my new body. My hair was still in a towel on the top of my head. My eyes were wide open making my eyebrows crawl even higher on my forehead. My chest and arms were naked as were my legs. Except for what was hanging between my legs, I looked like a woman. My mind was racing 100 miles an hour. What was happening here? If you want the truth, I think you're finally getting happier. What makes you say that? This was the first time I had answered the voice directly. Because you've smiled three times in the last two days. That's why. I thought about it. I was happier. This house was making me happy again. Who are you? I needed to find out who this voice was. You tried to help me. So I decided to return the favor and try to help you. Um, thanks, I think. But why are you making me do this to myself? And wait a minute, who are you anyway? Look in the mirror. I turned to look back in the mirror. I was still standing there wrapped in a towel with shaved legs and thin arched eyebrows, but over my shoulder was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. I spun around to see her in person, but she was gone. I turned back to the mirror and there she was again. She was absolutely stunning, but there was something familiar about her. It took a few seconds and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. You're the girl on the bike. It all came flooding back. I called the hospital. They wouldn't tell me anything. I was going to send you flowers. She nodded and smiled. I know. I know. And you're the one who stopped and comforted me. I came back to say thank you but you seemed like you needed some help too. So I asked for permission to stay and help cheer you up for a while. Thanks. I said looking down. So, how long are you staying? I'm not sure. But let's not think about that now. Okay. So, what's your name? It occurred to me that I didn't even know her name. Rebecca. But everyone calls me Becky. I'm Robin. I know. So, if you're here to make me happy, what's next? She smiled and motioned me over to sit in a chair. She removed the towel from my head and started brushing my hair. She carefully brushed out the knots. Then she reached into a drawer and pulled out a set of rollers. She grabbed a strand of my hair and wound it around the roller finishing with a clip. We chatted about my previous life as she continued with my hair. 
I told her everything about finding my wife and my best friend together and how I came here to start a new life. Well, I guess we are doing that. With that she finished the last roller and covered my head with a cap. She removed her robe from the bed and held it open for me as I slipped it over my shoulders. I was again staring in the mirror as I tied the belt. She dropped a pair of furry slippers at my feet. I stepped in and found myself about two inches taller than I was, but still only about even with her. I'm kind of thirsty. Can you make a good cup of tea? I had some of your tea last night. Was that okay? Of course, silly, you live here too you know. That smile was intoxicating. Why don't you show me how you like it? She was simply radiating with beauty as I followed her into the kitchen. Not at all like the poor girl I held in my arms before. I filled the tea kettle and put it on the stove. I opened the fridge to try and find something to go with it. Everything was so healthy looking. I grabbed two apples just as the kettle began to wail. I dropped a tea bag into the mugs and poured the hot water over them. She grabbed the tray and carried my healthy snacks over to the table. She picked up the honey and a lemon, adding it to her cup. There were a couple of magazines on the table. She opened one up to an article on nail care and spun it around so I could see it. Do you like this shade? The picture was of a pair of hands with nails about a quarter of an inch over the ends of the fingers. Each nail was neatly trimmed and painted with a deep shade of pink. I nodded blindly. There's a nail kit in the hall closet. Why don't you go get it while we have our tea? I retrieved the kit opening it up in front of me. With her directions, I filed each toe nail to an even rounded edge. She showed me how to use the toe separators so the polish wouldn't get smeared while it dried. I then started on my hands while she sipped her tea, occasionally offering advice. After both hands were done, I removed the toe separators and just stared at the results. I hadn't realized my fingernails were that long. I guess that's what happens when you don't care about much for a few months. Your nails are beautiful and you did a great job. Are you sure you haven't done this before? Her smile was as warm as compliments. These were not the hands I had just finished moving boxes in with. These hands were not just pretty, they were female. After my toes were dry I stepped back into the slippers and carried our dishes to the sink. I was going to just set them in the sink for later, but found myself rinsing them off and putting them in the dishwasher. We wandered back into the living room and made ourselves comfortable. She sat in the big chair and I curled up on the couch. My shiny toenails peeked out from under the robe. I turned the tables on her. This time we chatted about her life, her job, her ambitions and what had happened that afternoon on the road. I asked her if she could remember anything about that afternoon. She said the only thing she remembered was his face. I'll never forget that face. She said, as a tear came to the corner of her eye. He took everything from me. We ended up both crying and she moved over to the couch. We fell asleep on the couch wrapped up in each other's arms. When I woke up she was gone. It was well past midnight as I stumbled back to the bedroom. I slipped off the robe and stepped out of the slippers. I carefully folded the robe and set it on the end of the bed. You're not going to bed like that, are you? I looked around but she wasn't there. Just a voice in my head. I blindly walked over to the dresser and opened several drawers before finding a pair of panties and a nightgown. I stepped into the panties and slipped the nightgown over my head. It was short, coming only to mid-thigh but was very soft and had lots of lace. Go ahead. You're going to love the feel of those in the silk sheets. I looked around but the voice seemed to be coming from deep inside my head. I slid in between the sheets and was almost instantly asleep. As I slept, I had dreams of someone asleep beside me. Their arm was wrapped around my waist and a firm pair of breasts seemed to be pressing into my back. At times I felt soft breathing on the back of my neck. I woke up with the sun shining in my eyes. I squinted and told myself to remember to shut the blinds next time. I looked down at my hands and saw my nails. 
I was laying there recalling the best night's sleep I had ever had when I spun around in the bed. I was there alone but I could swear someone was in bed with me last night as I slept. I crawled out of bed and slipped back into the robe and slippers. After making the bed, I went to the kitchen. I needed some more tea, just not the kind that put me to sleep last night. I moved the sleepy time tea and found a box of breakfast red singer. Starting the water, I dropped a bagel into the toaster. I made my tea and fixed the bagel with some strawberry jam. I stared at my nails as I ate breakfast. I still couldn't believe I had done that but they were lovely. I rubbed the nails on the back of my hairless arm, enjoying the feeling and then stopped cold. How was I going to get the nail polish off so I could go to work? I ran as fast as I could in those slippers to the hall closet. There was a bottle of nail polish remover in the back, but it was empty. Here I was with shaved legs, arms, and chest, eyebrows that no man should have, and rollers still in my hair. What was happening to me? And how was I going to straighten all this out? Will you relax? Everything's going to be fine. I brushed my teeth and wandered back to the bedroom. Have a seat, Robin. The voice startled me, but as I sat down she appeared in the mirror. She removed the cap and started unrolling my hair. Your hair looks like it takes a set beautifully. I can't wait to see you with some color and a perm. Hair was starting to cover my face but it didn't hide the look in my eyes. She expected me to go out like this. After all the rollers were out, she brushed my hair and then pulled it back from my face pinning at the back. She let it cascade between my shoulders and added two tendrils on the side of my face. Okay, Robin. Turn around and look at me. I spun the chair around and there she was. A smile came to my face once again and I couldn't take my eyes off of her. I'll help you today but you're going to have to learn to do this yourself sooner or later. She grabbed a bottle off the table. This is called foundation. It helps even out your face and will hide any blemishes you may have. Then she pulled out a large brush and dipped it in some powder. She brushed it all over what she had done. This sets the foundation so it will last the whole day. Next another brush gave me some color to my cheeks. From there, she had me close my eyes so I couldn't see what she was doing but she was brushing something on my lids, eyebrows, and lashes. She was humming and I reached out and touched her leg for comfort. It startled her at first but then she moved closer. Okay, open your eyes and look. I didn't want to take my eyes off her but I turned around and looked in the mirror. She pointed at different places of my eyes. Eyebrow pencil, two shades of eyeshadow, always start darker and work up to lighter, eyeliner to the ends of the eyes, top and bottom, and mascara on your lashes. Now turn back around. I tried but I couldn't. I was still staring at the face in the mirror. She was too beautiful. Hello, Earth to Robin. I slowly turned around. Lipstick should always match your nails. I looked in her hand and saw a pink tube of lipstick that was the same shade as my nails. Open your mouth, slightly. She started on the top and drew the color on my open lips, finishing with my bottom lip. She had me blot my lips on some toilet paper then finished with a clear coat of shiny lip gloss. Well, that will have to do for now. Come on we haven't got all day. She was moving to the dresser, opening drawers left and right, pulling things out quickly and tossing them on the bed. She tossed me a pair of white lace panties and said, go put these on in the bathroom and come back out. Don't forget, we don't want any unsightly bulges. I grabbed two panties and stepped into the bathroom. I slid them up my legs. What a different feeling pulling up those panties over smooth legs. I settled them on my hips and tucked and pulled until I had a smooth front. I returned to the bedroom. She looked me over and nodded her approval. Lie down on the bed, Robin. She was digging in the top of the closet. I sat down on the bed and she came over with a box and dropped it on the bed, pushing me over on my back. Close your eyes again. I want this to be a surprise. She jumped up on my stomach and opened the box. Hold real still. 
She smeared a paste on my chest and plopped a cold blob of jelly on one side followed by another blob on the other side. She held them there for about five minutes, and then she jumped up. Okay, you can get up. I sat up and looked down. I had breasts. She returned from the dresser with a tube of something and some powder. She went to work with both of them until I couldn't tell where I ended and my breasts started. I reached up and cupped them in my hands wrapping my pink nails around them. They even had nipples. Come on, we're not done yet Cinderella, here you go. She motioned me to come over and raise my arms. She slid a bra over my arms and fastened it in the back, then returned to face me pulling my breasts up increasing the cleavage. I was again staring at the image in the mirror when she came up behind me holding a white sundress on a hanger. She slipped it over my head and zipped it up but it felt like it stopped about halfway up my back. It also left my breasts on display for everyone to see. She dropped a flat pair of leather sandals at my feet and without pausing said, let's go, beautiful. I turned just in time to see her headed down the hall. I took one final look in the mirror as I heard the back screen door slam. I made it to the back porch just as she disappeared down the path toward the beach. I ran as fast as I could in the dress. But it was so tight all I could manage was a mincing quick trot. I also found moving my arms as I ran helped balance the movement of my breasts. I caught her just as she made it to the water. We both slipped out of our sandals and started down the beach wading ankle-deep in the warm water. We chatted like old girlfriends during the entire walk. Nothing was off-limits. Before we knew it, over an hour had passed and it was time to turn around. We were laughing uncontrollably as we came up the porch and went back inside. I grabbed both her hands and looked her straight in the eyes. Today was the best day of my life. How can I ever thank you? You don't have to. Just seeing that smile is payment enough. I promise the first thing I'm going to do when I go back to work is to find that man. She smiled and I gave her a big hug. Work. What am I going to do? I can't go to work like this. I looked down at my dress full of boobs and reached up running my fingers through my hair. You're right. We have to do something. Let's go. With that she was out the door and gone again. I followed her out to the yard and saw her already sitting in the front seat of my car. I climbed into the driver's seat. Where are we going? Nowhere without your wallet and checkbook, silly. I reached back instinctively to my back pockets and remembered I was wearing a dress. Hurry up, girlfriend. We've got appointments. I ran back inside and grabbed my wallet and checkbook. I found a purse hanging in the closet that matched my dress and shoved them inside. Before I knew it we were driving down the road towards town. Why was it, every time I was with her everything seemed perfect? We parked the car and were walking down the sidewalk arm in arm. Here we are, right on time. You've got an appointment in three minutes. I looked up and saw a sign that said Vashon House of Beauty as she shoved me through the front doors. I turned to look but she was gone again. Hi, you must be Robin. I spun around and found a woman standing behind the desk and nodded. My name's Sarah and you're right on time. Let's go. We're all set up in the back room. I followed her to a room at the back of the salon. Okay, first we're going to start with a mineral body wrap. Go ahead and undress and step on the scale for a before treatment weigh-in. I was frozen in place clutching my purse. I didn't know what to do and I sure wasn't going to let her in on my little secret. Relax, honey. If you're shy you can leave your panties on but you have to remove the rest of your clothes. She pried my purse from my hands and hung it on the hook. I was really glad Becky had taken the time to hide the seams on those forms. I stepped out of my clothes and hung them on the hook with my purse. I stepped on the digital scale holding one hand across my chest and the other a bit lower trying to hide any unexpected bulges. If she saw anything, she didn't let on. 146 pounds, we should get some fantastic results on you. She took some pictures and made some notes on the chart before she left. I glanced down to check if the seams on my breasts were still invisible as she left the room. 
The technician came back in carrying two large bowls. One was full of bandages soaking in some fragrant liquids. It smelled similar to the bath beads I had been using. The other seemed to be full of mud. She had me look up as she smeared my face and neck with mud. It was warm and started to dry immediately. As it dried it got even hotter. Not uncomfortable but definitely warmer. She then pulled out a large roll of bandages from the other bowl and started wrapping at my ankles. She pulled the wraps tight as she went further up each leg and continued up my waist to the top of my shoulders. She concentrated a lot on my waist and left it fairly loose but still snug around my breasts. She continued on both arms and even wrapped my neck and head covering the mud pack until the only thing left exposed were my pink toes and fingernails, my eyes, nose, and mouth. She helped me lay down on the table and placed two cotton balls soaked with the same sort of liquid over each eye. Just rest and let the wraps do their work as they dry. I think you'll be amazed at the results. Here's some music to help you relax. She placed some headphones over the wraps near my ears, turned on some music, and dimmed the lights as she left. It didn't take long for the warm wraps and soothing music to put me to sleep. I don't know how long I laid there but someone removed the headphones from my head as I woke up. I tried to sit up but the wraps had tightened as they dried. Now I know how a mummy must have felt. The technician helped me up and started removing the wraps. She removed the wraps from my face leaving the dried mud in place. I felt a little lightheaded and must have swayed a bit. She told me that was normal and would pass soon. She continued to unwrap my waist. I reached down and felt my waist. Other than the wrinkles that came from the tight wraps, I could feel from my ribs to my hip bones that I had sunk in quite a bit and now had what could only be called a real waist. As she moved down my legs I watched in amazement. She had used the wraps to not only reduce the size of my legs, but she had actually reshaped them as well. She finished by removing the mask. It cracked as it was peeled off and flaked away in pieces. I reached up and felt my face. It was soft and smooth. After she finished she had me stand back on the scale. 124 pounds. I thought we'd do well but 22 pounds is much better than I expected. I was staring into the mirror when I saw a flash out of the corner of my eye. Those must be the after pictures. I thought. She opened a hidden door behind the table. When you're ready come on in here. She flipped on a light and was filling a spray bottle as I looked in. There was a tanning bed in the center of the room. I stopped and was looking at the bed when she sprayed a mist on my back and moved around to my front. Close your eyes, please. I did and she sprayed the mist on my face. She didn't rub it in and I saw that the liquid was spotted all over my body. It was cold and I found myself shivering naked except for my underwear. She had me carefully lay down on the bed, place some small goggles over my eyes, and close the lid. Thirty minutes should do it. Try not to move if you can. We don't want to smear the lotion and spoil the effects. When the lights go off put on the robe and come on out. With that the lights came on and she left. I laid there feeling my long nails with my thumbs to pass the time while I baked. The bell sounded and the lights went off. I opened the lid and stepped out to the other room. I was still self-conscious so I reached for my bra to cover up a little bit. As I moved to grab the robe I glanced in the mirror. My mouth almost hit the floor. I had freckles all over. That lotion had given me freckles. That's why she didn't rub in the spray and told me not to move. I slipped into the robe and tied the belt. I didn't even notice that robe was wrapped further around me because of the weight loss. I left the room shaking my head. What does Becky have planned for me next? Well, don't we look different? Let me see. Sarah came over and started undoing my belt right there in front of everybody. I stopped her by opening the top of my robe to expose the top of my breasts. She broke into a smile as she examined my freckles and then ran her hands down my waist as she looked at my chart. 22 pounds. My goodness. That worked better than I thought. 
She led me over to another part of the salon and had me sit in her chair. Sarah covered me with her sheet and started running her hands through my hair. Well, what shall we do? She didn't appear to be talking to anybody in particular so I didn't say anything. I just shrugged my shoulders and shook my head. Hmm. Extensions, color and highlights to start. I think. Then we'll see what we have to work with. With that she leaned me back and started washing my hair. She called over an assistant but I couldn't hear her over the running water. The assistant nodded and left. After she was done she sat me up and parted my hair near the back between my ears. Then she combed the rest of my hair forward over my eyes. I lost sight of what she was doing but I felt small strands of my hair being pulled and tied in various areas of my head. Every so often she reparted my hair higher and started over. When she finished, she brushed my hair back and I saw that my hair was much longer as she brushed it well past my shoulder blades. Then she threw a towel over the mirror hiding my reflection. The rest is going to be a surprise, sweetie. I sat there as she started rinsing my hair with some sort of bottle and rubbed it all over. After my head was completely covered she set a timer and left me there. When the timer went off, she rinsed me off in the sink and started folding tin foil on my hair. She painted each section with a brush and continued folding each section of foil over on itself as she moved higher. My head was covered in foil and she set the timer again. My head was heavy with foil and I had to sit there until the timer went off a second time. I was getting tired of holding my head when the timer dinged. Okay, let's see what we ended up with. She pulled all the foil out and washed my hair a third time. Sarah was singing to herself as she brushed and combed my hair. Leslie. She called out. You can begin any time you want to. Okay Sarah, I'll be right there. I assume it was Leslie that came over pushing a cart. Leslie removed the polish from my nails and placed both of my hands in a bowl letting them soak while she massaged my feet. That felt wonderful. After a few minutes she placed both feet into a tub of warm water. She picked my left hand out of the liquid and started pushing my cuticles back, trimming off any excess that built up. She then filed each nail roughing up the surfaces and glued an extension on each nail. As my left hand dried under a lamp she trimmed my other cuticles, roughed up the surface of the other nails and added the extensions to my right hand. As both hands dried under the lamp she dried my feet and worked on my toenails. She removed the old pink polish and then filed each nail, finishing by painting them with a deep, dark, cherry red. After my toes were done, Leslie took my hands and filed each nail to a long rounded edge. Each nail was at least a half inch past the ends of my fingers. She finished each finger with the same dark shade of red that was on my toenails. She placed both hands back under the light to dry. The entire time Sarah was working on my hair. She combed my hair forward over my eyes and started snipping. Hair was falling away from my face. It was obvious that my new hairstyle included bangs. She trimmed them so that they were feathered to just over the top of my eyes. Every time I blinked, they moved. Sarah moved around my head clipping and trimming. All the while she never stopped singing to herself. It was clear she enjoyed her job but took it very serious. She finished by using a brush and a blow dryer, curling the ends under and framing my face. Leslie came back and removed my hands from the lamps as Sarah proclaimed my hair to be a finished product. Sarah was primping my hair every now and then as she called to Laura. Laura wheeled over a small table with a pot plugged into the wall. She laid me back in the chair and examined my face. Your brow lines aren't bad but they could use a little more shaping for your face. With that she turned around and grabbed small wooden stick and smeared my brow with warm goo. Before it could cool off she pushed some cloth into it and without warning ripped off the cloth. She said she was sorry but didn't hesitate as she performed the same treatment on the other brow. This time I braced myself for the pain and grabbed the arms of the chair. She pulled and it was over before I could get ready. She rubbed a soothing cream into the tender area and that seemed to help. I was still blinking as she wheeled the cart away. 
Sarah returned carrying what I could only describe as a large tackle box. She opened it up and began painting my face similar to what Becky had done before. The only difference this time was she added a set of false eyelashes that added to the movement of my bangs when I blinked. She finished with the same deep shade of lipstick that Leslie had used on my nails. Sarah proclaimed me ready and dropped the towel from the mirror. She spun me around to meet the new me. My eyes opened wide, my hands shot up to my mouth, and I almost fainted on the spot. I probably would have had I not been still sitting in the chair. I dropped my hands and leaned in for a closer look. My hair was now a deep red with strawberry and blonde highlights. My eyebrows were barely visible through my new bangs. But they were thin and arched high above my eyes. They almost looked painted on. My eyes were framed with dark eyeliner and painted up into a soft gray on my eyelids. My new eyelashes reached all the way up to my bangs. My complexion from my forehead down to my cleavage was as smooth as a baby and deeply freckled. But it was my lips that attracted my attention the most. Besides being a deep dark crimson, they looked much different. I reached up with my finger to touch them because they tingled. I used a new plumping lipstick on your lips. That's why they tingle. That feeling will go away in a few minutes but they'll stay fuller for hours. She spun me around and removed the cape from my shoulders. Well, what do you think? Is this enough of a change? I was told you were starting over here on our island and wanted to look entirely different. I was still speechless. We had some new clothes delivered to your dressing room while you were busy. Go on back and get changed. I walked back to the rear dressing room and closed the door behind me. I removed the robe and almost unconsciously folded the robe on the table. On the hook instead of my white sundress that I had come in with I found a zippered bag. I reached up and unzipped the bag revealing a white blouse with a dark blue pencil skirt and tailored jacket behind it. I laid the clothes on the table and found another pocket that was full of lingerie. Wow, don't you look different. It was Becky. The door hadn't opened but there she was in the room with me. You look fantastic. If I hadn't scheduled all this I wouldn't believe it was you. She was digging in the bag for more accessories. Here let me help you. Turn around. She undid my bra and checked my seams to be sure nothing showed. She snapped the new white push-up bra around me and again pulled more cleavage up. She had me change my underwear replacing it with a white lace thong that rode high up on my hips. She followed this with a garter belt tucking the straps inside my thong. Becky had me sit on the table and showed me how to roll up the stockings so they wouldn't run and attach them to the garters. She slipped a lace t-shirt over my bra and I asked her what that was for. It's not a t-shirt, it's a camisole. It helps smooth out any lines. I then tried to put on the blouse but found the buttons on the wrong side and the entire process made impossible by my new long nails. Becky helped me button the blouse and then held the jacket up so I could put it on. She pulled the lace collar up and exposed it on top of the lapels of the jacket. A pair of pumps with a four-inch heels were dropped at my feet. I slipped them on my feet and almost fell over. Walk on the balls of your feet and take shorter steps. You'll find it much easier to balance. She returned from digging in the bag and reached her arms around my neck smiling. I wondered what she was doing but as she pulled away I found a locket on a gold chain draped around my neck hanging right in the middle of my cleavage. I reached up to look at it and she fastened a gold lady's watch on one wrist and a gold bracelet on the other. She held out several rings in her hand and let me choose which finger to put them on. Becky then transferred the contents of my white purse to a black shoulder bag, dropped a handful of something gold in my hand and pushed me out the door. Sarah was there to meet me as I stumbled out the door. Well, now that is a big change from what we started with. She had me slowly turn to show off the new me and noticed what Becky had put in my hand. Oops, I almost forgot. Come over here. She had me sit on a stool and took the items from my hand. She reached behind me and in a matter of seconds she was placing earrings in my newly pierced ears. Three in one ear and two in the other. This is a new process for piercing ears. 
You can wear hoops and dangling earring from day one. No more wearing posts while you wait for the holes to heal. I reached up and pulled my hair back exposing my ears. Looking in the mirror, I saw each ear had a gold chain about two inches long ending in a single drop pearl, higher up another hole had gold hoops, and the extra hole higher up in my left ear now sported a post in the shape of a small golden bike wheel. My face turned from amazement to a smile when I saw that wheel. She had put it there so I wouldn't ever forget her. I used my new long nails to pull my hair from behind my ears and fluffed it back into shape. I shook my head slightly to help and I heard the new earrings tinkling in my ears. I found myself following Sarah up to the front desk and pulled out my checkbook. New clients get a 50% discount if they book another appointment Sarah said with a smile. Well who am I to disappoint you after such a nice discount? I said. I was looking at my handwriting as I filled out the check. The pen was hard to hold with my new long nails but suddenly I felt an invisible hand guiding me and almost effortlessly I began using large, flowing cursive in place of my old sloppy printing. Even my signature felt more natural. Luckily Sarah didn't ask for any ID because even though I was still using my real name, none of the pictures I had was close to identifying me with my new look. I handed her the check and she handed me a card with an appointment for next week. Thanking her I found myself leaving with a newfound confidence. I also felt a slight swish in my hips as I left. I walked out onto sidewalk and started back toward my car. Almost instantly I felt an arm curl under mine and a soft breast brush against me. Oh my god. Cried Becky. You look better than I ever imagined. How do you feel? I feel great but how can I ever return to being a boy again after all this? I motioned with my arms. Nothing that was done is permanent. Except maybe the new holes in your ears. So relax. But I got the impression you were enjoying the new you and didn't want to go back. Don't get me wrong, I feel better than I ever have, but I'm nervous about the new me meeting people. She stopped suddenly spinning me around and showed me the reflection in the large picture window of the dress shop. Do you see any of the old, unhappy you in the window? Would you think you are looking at anything but a gorgeous, fair-skinned redhead? I studied my reflection in the window. She's right. I saw nothing of the old me and I stepped in for a closer look. Starting at the top I looked at my red hair surrounding a flawlessly made-up face. My eyes had a sultry look and my plump lips were begging to be kissed. My exposed breasts were perched high on display through my blouse and my coat buttoned underneath them accentuated my newly thinned waist. My skirt ended slightly above my knees exposing nylon encased legs finishing with my 4-inch blue leather pumps. We both gasped but for different reasons. My breath was because there was really nothing left of the old me. Becky grabbed my arm and I turned to thank her again but she was staring across the street. It's him. Him who? You know, him. I looked over and saw a man stagger out of a bar and head down the street. We saw him getting into a car and drive away. Let's go. I yelled. We started running for my car that was still a block away. Becky was way ahead of me. I fumbled getting the keys out of my purse and shoved them into the lock. We jumped in the car and my tires squealed as I left the parking space. Thankfully, no traffic had been coming because I had forgotten to look. We caught up to him as he left town. I jotted down the license number and we followed him until he turned into a driveway. He was weaving all over. Becky was shaking her head and cursing under her breath. I noted the address on the mailbox and wrote it down on the same paper that had his license plate. I turned the car around and headed back for town. He's going to hurt somebody else. We have to stop him. We will. I promise. Becky was shaking and I found I was gripping the wheel so tight that my nails were wrapped all the way around the wheel and digging into my palms. I relaxed and tried to control my breathing. I made a left heading back to a different part of town. Where are we going? To my new job. We have some work to do. I said glancing at myself in the rear view mirror. 
I used my nails to fix my bangs from when we ran, reapplied my lipstick, and wiped the edges of my lips to clean up some smeared color. I walked in the front door and was greeted by a pretty young receptionist. Hi, Mandy. I had glanced at the nameplate on the counter as I walked in. Robin Davis to see the editor, Mr. Lang. Mandy looked up and grabbed the phone. One moment, please, Miss Davis. After a short pause, Mandy spoke into the phone. Mr. Lang, there's a Miss Robin Davis here to see you. No, sir, I'm sure it's a Mississippi okay. I'll send her right in. She hung up and directed me to the back office with big windows overlooking most of the room. I knocked and he waved me in. Hi, Mr. Lang, Robin Davis. I extended my hand as I strode confidently to his desk, but he didn't even look up. He stopped writing and looked over his glasses. I had assumed you were a man, he said as I received my first slow, independent head-to-toe evaluation. I'm sorry to disappoint you, sir, but I don't think I look much like a man. If only he knew. I thought as Becky poked me in the ribs with a chuckle. Well, in any case, your resume was impressive. Here's your first assignment. Grab an empty desk anywhere you can find one. He handed me a piece of paper and waved me out of his office. Sir, if you don't mind, I already have a story I'm working on. But I can handle both at the same time if that's okay. He didn't even look up. He just grunted and kept waving. I found an empty desk in a corner with a computer and sat down. I pulled my piece of paper out and slid my purse into the bottom drawer along with the piece of paper Mr. Lang had given me. Later. I thought I have more important stories to write. Becky pulled up a chair and sat next to me. I turned on the computer and did a reverse look up on the address we had written down. It's a lot harder typing with these long nails. I complained to Becky. It's slowing me down. Why did they have to be so long? Because they look so good on you. They make your finger so long and slender. Besides, you'll get used to them and after a while you won't even notice. The website came back as being registered to a William Kinney Jr. Now that name is familiar, but from where? I said. What name? I spun around and almost jumped out of my chair. Oh, hi. Sorry I snuck up on you. My name's Steve. I was told by Mr. Lang to be your photographer. He put his arm around my shoulder and leaned over to look at my computer screen. Little Billy Kinney? Here's the sheriff's boy and the local drunk around here. What's up with him? He sat down in the chair next to my desk just as Becky jumped out of his way. He's kinda cute, isn't he? She said in a giggle with her eyebrows raising up and down. What? I looked at Becky and then over at Steve. He was smiling. I looked him over as discreetly as I could but I think he caught on anyway. Blonde hair, blue eyes, about six feet tall and a great smile. He was handsome but I'd never thought of another male as cute before. I said he's the sheriff's son. Cracking another smile. He had nice teeth and I gave him a smile back without thinking. We locked eyes for about 10 seconds before he broke the silence. So what's he done this time? I quickly looked back at my computer. Nothing I can prove. It's just something I'm working on for a friend. I thought Lang wanted us to do that story on the ladies' auxiliary fundraiser for the fire department. Well, I kinda told him I could do both. Okay, but the dinner starts at 7. That's only two hours away. You better get your homework done. I'll be back in an hour and a half to pick you up. I'll drive since I know the way. He grabbed his camera and walked towards the front door. I leaned over my computer and watched as he left. Becky hit me on the arm. Told you he was cute, wasn't he? Becky said as she fussed with my hair and brushed some lint off my shoulders. She moved from brushing lint to giving me a massage. You are cuter than I ever imagined. She subtly moved lower over my shoulders and started rubbing my breasts. I moaned quietly. You better stop. We have a lot of work to do before I get stuck at this dinner. 
I reached up and gave her hands a squeeze. When was the last time I said that as a male? I thought. I asked the computer to pull up all the previous stories we had on Billy. Nothing. I checked all the criminal files on the public records. Nothing. A guy like this has to have a record somewhere. Frustrated, I hit the keyboard with my fists. Not if you're the son of a sheriff. Becky cooed in my ear. Knock it off, will you? I grabbed my purse out of the drawer. Let's go. Where to? You have a date in two hours. Becky teased. I gave her a look that said stop it and turned to leave. As we got in the car, she asked again. So where are we off to? The bar we saw Billy come out of last. We need some more information. And how are we going to get it? I'm a reporter and a woman. I parked next to the bar and pulled up on my breasts to increase the cleavage until they were practically falling out of my blouse. What better way to get some information out of a bar full of guys? You may have experience as a reporter, but you've still got a lot to learn about being a woman and a bar is not a place for the inexperienced and naive. I'm going with you, but we leave when we say we leave. She got out of the bar and headed toward the door. We stopped just inside the door. It was so dark, it took a full minute for our eyes to adjust before we could see anything. I looked around. Every eye in the place was on me. Suddenly, I felt rather uncomfortable being here. Becky grabbed my arm and I made my way to a stool at the end of the bar. I put my purse on the bar and reached in for some money starting my tape recorder at the same time. I was nervous but I was still a reporter with a job to do. The bartender dropped a napkin on the bar and asked for my order. I usually drink beer. Not finding that appropriate I glanced at Becky. White wine. She said. What kind of white wine do you have? I said as I placed my money on the bar. One kind. He said as he grabbed my money. I watched him unscrew the cap off a bottle and fill a glass. He brought it back placing it on the napkin alongside my change. I thanked him and took a sip. I winced. I guess it wasn't a good week for the winery. I told Becky. We weren't there long before we overheard someone taking to the bartender about Billy getting into some trouble again. I checked to make sure my recorder was still running as I got some more money out for a refill of the bar's best white vinegar. I overheard that Billy was getting his car fixed because of an incident last week. I wrote down the name of the body shop where he had taken the car. I had to get there before they started removing any evidence. I left a tip for the bartender and looked at my watch. It was 6.30. I had 30 minutes to freshen up and meet Steve. I stood up to leave and stumbled. I wasn't used to walking in heels and three glasses of wine, no matter how cheap, made it more difficult. I fell right into the arms of the two guys that were talking about Billy. One of them caught me in his arms and stopped me from falling all the way to the floor. Are you all right, miss? He had one hand on my arm and the other behind my back. I grabbed his arm to stand back up and felt how muscular it was. I gave him a big but tipsy smile and said, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Who knows what they would have seen if I had fallen all the way to the floor. Are you sure? He said, you don't look like you're in any shape to drive. Can I give you a ride somewhere? No, thank you. You've both done enough already. I flashed them both another smile with a wink as I headed for the door. I was still wobbly as I leaned into Becky to help stop from falling over again. The fresh air helped a little bit but I was too drunk to drive. It took us most of the half hour I had left to walk back to the office. Once there she got me a cup of coffee that had been brewing all day. I downed it and that seemed to help. I sat back at my desk and pulled up a list of all the body shops on the island. The one I needed was close to my house. I wrote down the address and told Becky we would go over first thing in the morning. I had my feet up on the desk and was rubbing my calves when Steve showed up. I'd never walked that far in heels before and they were sore from the long walk back to the office. Are you okay? Yeah. 
My feet just hurt from walking in heels all day that's all. My smile was a little straighter this time but I was still far from sober. Well, let's put on your shoes and get going. He kneeled down and to help me put on my shoes. Thoughts of Cinderella and the glass slipper were going through my head. I was staring at him and admiring his good looks when Becky cleared her throat as she read my thoughts. He offered me his hand as he helped me stand up. My legs were screaming but I managed to stand up. Just a minute. I need to visit the ladies' room before we leave. I wobbled once on the way there but I don't think he saw me. He was grabbing his photo bag. In the bathroom, I brushed my hair and was freshening up my makeup when Becky came in. Are you sure you're alright? He's awfully cute and I saw the way you were both looking at each other. I grabbed a tube of lipstick out of my bag and started spreading the thick, dark cream on my lips. I'll be fine. He seems like a perfect gentleman. My lips were tingling and starting to plump up again from lipstick. It's not him I'm worried about. She said as she helped me repack my purse. I closed my purse and slung it over my shoulder. I'll be fine. Opening the door and I stopped and looked back. Giving her a wink, I added. I'll be home early. Don't wait up, mom. Steve was there waiting as I strutted back over to my desk. Stuffing my notebook into my purse, I grabbed him under his arm. Let's go, big boy. I exaggerated wiggling my ass as we left and looked over at Becky standing there shaking her head. Steve opened his car door and I slid in. It wasn't that far a trip and we chit-chatted most of the way there. He told me he was single with no girlfriend at the moment. I reached down and pulled up my skirt to adjust my garter. How can I believe a young good-looking guy like you isn't attached? I was purposely tempting him. It worked because I caught him sneaking a peek. Just because I don't have a girlfriend doesn't mean I don't have any prospects. I saw him fidgeting in his seat trying to adjust himself and I smiled. We pulled into the parking lot and I checked my makeup in the mirror. I realized that was getting to be a habit. But it was one that I was beginning to enjoy. The place was packed as I got out. It looked like the fundraising dinner was going to be a success. Steve paid for my dinner ticket and brought me a glass of wine. We split up to mingle as he grabbed his camera and I slipped into reporter mode. There wasn't much going on except for the usual boring small town gossip. But I suppose that's what Lang expected. I glanced over at Steve and caught him looking back. I smiled and he swung his camera over to take my picture. I struck a pose and saw the camera flash. He smiled and went back to work. I was doing my best to mingle and try to look interested in some of the conversations going on when I noticed the sheriff standing across the room. Now that finally looked interesting. I casually worked my way over to him and waited until he wasn't busy. I introduced myself as a new reporter at the paper and we chatted for several minutes as I sipped my drink. We talked about his job and how boring it must be to be a lawman in a small town. He told me they had the normal neighbor against neighbor spats and the like. I finished my drink and he bought me another one. The wine was building up my courage. I asked him if anything serious ever happened to make his job interesting. I saw him get a little uncomfortable and decided if I didn't get something soon, this interview was going to be cut short. I took a big gulp and told him I had heard a rumor of a woman on a bike being hit by a drunk driver and that I could find nothing in any of the public police records. I watched his face turn from pleasant to an irritated shade of red. Well then, little lady, that must mean that a rumor is just that and it never really happened. With that he abruptly turned and walked away. Apparently, I had struck a nerve. I finished my cup of wine and reached into my purse to turn off my handy recorder. My work was done and I was feeling the effects of the wine again. I found Steve talking to some older women and slid up next to him. I accused some of the women of trying to steal my man and they all giggled. I excused ourselves and reaching around his waist, pulled him away. Do you have enough pictures, yet? He tucked his camera into the bag. I think so. Are you ready to leave? 
I squeezed him and said, I have everything I need. Let's go. We left arm in arm and went back to his car. I forgot to fasten my seatbelt and he reached over to put it on for me. I looked up at him. He paused, our faces were inches apart. I licked my plump lips and without thinking, reached up and kissed him firmly on the lips. I felt his hand sliding up my side as his tongue parted my lips. I could feel a drop of moisture in my panties and a stirring in my own loins just as his hand reached my breast. I bit his tongue and grabbed his hand. He pulled back just in time. Moving a little fast, aren't you, cowboy? We were staring into each other's eyes, our lips still within striking distance. Maybe, but I'm not the one that made the first move, he said slyly. He gave me another quick kiss and started the car. I looked over as he left the parking lot, I could see the bulge in his pants. I reached over and ran my hand through his hair to straighten it out. He smiled and I dropped my hand on his leg. I felt him squirm so I used my long nails to scratch his leg a little. I knew it couldn't go anywhere, but I was enjoying being on the other side of a tease for once. He drove me home on the excuse of me being too drunk to drive, but I think he just wanted to see where I lived. I figured as much as I had pissed off the sheriff that night, I better not give him any excuse to pull me over. As we pulled into the driveway and stopped, I gave him another quick peck on the lips, told him I'd see him at work in the morning, and jumped out before it went any further. I saw the curtains move slightly as I walked up onto the porch. I opened the door and dropped my purse on the table. Taking off my heels, I rubbed my feet. They hurt. My first entire day in heels had taken a toll. I went into the bedroom and undressed. I left my on panties but took off my bra and let my breasts go free. My robe felt luxurious. I was enjoying the cool softness of the silk and being comfortable after a long day. I went into the bathroom and soaked a washcloth to clean off my makeup. I pulled my hair back into a ponytail and admired my new self in the mirror before I started. Did you enjoy yourself tonight? I looked and saw Becky standing in the doorway. I did. I smiled thinking it might be better to say as little as possible. But I think my smile was a little more of a smirk as I thought back to Steve. Your lipstick is a little smudged. I looked in the mirror and started washing off my face. What did you expect with all the changes you made? You better be careful. There are some things better left to the imagination, if you know what I mean. She wrapped her arms around me. It's good to have you home. So what did you find out? I thought my time for being a tease was over but I couldn't resist. Um, are you still referring to getting information about the accident? She slapped my butt and grabbed a hairbrush. I jumped thinking she was going to use it for further punishment for being so sassy. Relax, you little flirt. This is for your head not the other end. She reached up and undid my ponytail. Not that you don't deserve it there. She brushed my hair until it shined and then kissed me on the neck. I slid my arm around her waist and held her close. I found the sheriff at the fundraiser tonight. He got real nervous when I started asking him about the accident and cut the conversation short. He knows something and didn't like me snooping around. She braided my hair and put a rubber band at the end to hold it for the night. I put a coat of lip gloss on my lips. It just didn't feel right without something on them anymore. I yawned. It had been a long day and morning was coming soon. I crawled in between those silk sheets and felt her snuggle up behind me again. This time I turned over and held her close until we both fell asleep. Morning came too early. The sun was shining through the windows. I recalled all the events of last night. When I got to the part of kissing Steve, I could feel myself stirring. I got out of bed and stretched. Looking in the mirror I saw my breasts pushing out my negligee. I could just see the outlines of my nipples through the lace. I tucked myself back up and pulled my underwear tight. Slipping on my robe, I tied it tight and reminded myself I had to ask Becky what was in that spa wrap. I stepped into my slippers, smiled and twirled in front of the mirror. 
Becky was in the kitchen fixing breakfast as I walked in. You've got a real shine to you this morning. What's up? I kissed her on the cheek and grabbed a mug. I feel like everything's finally working out. I didn't know why I felt like I had to move here when I left Denver. But now everything just feels right. I sat at the table and sipped my tea. After breakfast, I dressed for the day. Nothing fancy this time, I had work to do. After putting on a bra, I found a pair of jeans and pulled them on. I noticed they weren't any way near as tight as the first pair I tried on to unpack. Pulling on a sweater, I buttoned it up and pulled my hair out from under it. I turned to look at my butt. It felt bigger. Maybe it was because of how slim my waist was now. I rubbed my hands on my rear, feeling the curves under the tight jeans and moved up my waist to feel my breasts. I had to stop and take a deep breath. Feeling a little vain today, are we? She had a way of popping in just at the right moment. No. Can't a girl make sure she looks presentable? I stepped into a pair of low-wedge open-toed sandals. I couldn't bear another full day in high heels so soon. Ooh, and self-conscious, too. How lovely! I feigned madness and walked into the bathroom. I felt my face. Still no trace of any whiskers. Whatever was in that mud pack was doing a heck of a job. I started with my eyes. Only this time not as dramatic. Eyeshadow, eyeliner, and some mascara. My tan and freckles on my face as a result of the tanning bed precluded any need for blush. I coated my lips with a coat of lipstick and stood back to admire my work. Approving, I brushed my hair, curling it under at the end so it framed my face. I changed my earrings to a pair of hoops on the bottom holes and a smaller set in the middle. I left the bike wheel in place. A small pearl necklace, a couple bracelets, two rings, my watch, and I was ready to go. I checked one last time in the mirror at the whole finished product. Satisfied with my appearance, I grabbed my purse and headed out the door. I pulled my keys out and stopped dead in my tracks. My car was still in town and I was stuck. There are no taxis on the island. I had to call Steve. Besides he was the only one who knew where I lived. The phone rang and he answered on the first ring. Good morning. I didn't even get a chance to tell him who it was or what my problem is. He just knew and said he'd be right over. I hung up and waited for him to arrive. I didn't have to wait long before there was a knock at my door. I checked myself in the mirror, I know, I know. I'm vain, Becky, and answered the door. Steve was standing there with the prettiest bouquet of flowers. These are for the most beautiful girl on the island. He said as he gave them to me. They smelled wonderful. I smiled and gave him a quick peck on the cheek. I went to put them in some water and found Becky in the kitchen. You better be careful. I feel this relationship getting close. Don't worry. Everything's fine. I have it under control. And how much experience do you have with men? Ah, uh, I am one remember? That only means you both have the same raging desires, not the cautious attitude of a woman. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Steve came into the kitchen. Who are you talking to? I dropped the flowers into the vase. I was just saying how nice it was for you to bring flowers. I gave him another quick kiss, this time on the lips, as I turned to look at Becky shaking her head. I smiled and said, ready? We've got a lot of work to do today. I grabbed my purse and Steve's hand pulling him out the door. So where are off to in such a hurry? Do you know where Vashon Auto Body is? Yeah, it's on the south end of the island. Then step on it. I checked my watch. It said 10 in the morning. I overslept this morning and we have to get there before they start on the repair work. Okay, so what's this about? I explained the whole story about seeing the accident on my way into town and then seeing nothing in the paper. I left out the part about living with a ghost. I needed credibility for my story. And I don't think he needed to know my true identity yet. We got to the body shop and found it closed. 
It was a small shop run by a man and his son. The sign on the door said they were out picking up a car and would return in about an hour. We walked around the side of the building and found the car in the back lot. Unfortunately, it was behind a high chain link fence. We had no choice. I started climbing the fence and felt a hand on my butt. Steve was giving me a boost. His hand was awfully close to finding out the rest of my story that I had skipped, but I needed the help. My sandals were not the best for fence climbing. I made it over and headed for the car. Steve was over the fence before I reached the car. I looked at the front end damage caused by the collision with the bike. That's what we need. I found a piece of the hood that had some scrapes in it. Steve pulled out a small camera from his pocket and snapped some pictures. I took out my keys and scraped some of the paint from the bike off the hood. He took a couple more pictures and we started to leave. Just as we got to the corner of the fence a truck pulled up and we heard a couple of men talking. We dashed for the other side of the building and jumped on a wrecked car. From there it was an easy climb over the fence. Steve picked me up and practically threw me over. I caught my sweater on the top of the fence and heard a loud rip as I fell to the ground. We made a dash for the car and jumped in just as the garage door was closing. We were laughing at the close call as we sped away. You look like you ruined your sweater back there on the fence. I looked down at my exposed breasts. Even my bra was torn. My breasts were there for all to see. I grabbed the edges of my shredded sweater and tried to pull it shut. Steve pulled the car over and opened the trunk looking for something to cover me up. I got out to help look. He found a spare coat and helped me put it on. I zipped it up and thanked him for being such a gentleman. He pulled me close and kissed me. It was a passionate kiss and I gave in to it. His hands were on my breasts before I knew it. I tried to pull them away but he was too strong. Robin, it's okay. What's okay? I asked holding the top of my coat closed. I know. I stopped dead. No what? I asked nervously. Everything. I confirmed my suspicions helping you over the fence the first time. The color drained out of my face and I fainted. I woke up back in the car as he was driving back to town. I was covered up with a blanket to keep me warm and the seat was leaning back. I looked over at him as he drove. So, where do we go from here? He put his hand on my leg and smiled. Back to town. You've got a hell of a story to write for old man Lang that's going to bust this town wide open. I held the blanket close until we reached the office. I got to the office and Steve took his camera to download the pictures. I sat at my desk and started typing. This wasn't the story Mr. Lang had sent me to do but I don't think that would be a problem. I finished the story and sent it along with Steve's pictures to the sheriff. I called and I told him of the story that was coming out. I said if he wanted to save face, I would give him 24 hours to arrest his son for drunk driving, negligent homicide, and leaving the scene of an accident. I then told him I expect him to resign because of the cover-up he did for his son all these years. He agreed and hung up the phone. I leaned back in my chair. Steve came over and I stood to meet him smiling. All done? Yup. He agreed to arrest his son and resign by tomorrow morning. I looked up at Steve and then down at the ground. So where do we go from here? He reached around my waist with that warm smile. I guess we go back to your place and get you a new blouse. I looked up surprised to hear him say that and saw him smiling. I grabbed him around the neck and kissed him hard. We pulled up to the house and both got out. We walked up to the porch with our arms around each other's waist step for step. He opened the door and I excused myself to get changed. I walked back into the bedroom and took off his coat. I removed my torn sweater and was examining the damage to my breasts. Ahem. I spun around to see Becky sitting on the bed. What happened to you? I told her the whole story about finding the car, climbing the fence, tearing my sweater, talking to the sheriff, and his agreement to arrest his son and resign. She jumped up and hugged me. 
Thank you. How can I ever repay you for what you've done? You don't have to thank me. I'm a just a reporter doing my job. I should be thanking you. It looks like we helped each other then. I hugged her and held her tight. She helped me remove my breasts as I looked in the mirror. My flat chest looked out of place. I rubbed my chest and vowed to do something better than just add another pair of falsies. I decided to find someone to help me get the real thing. Rather than finding a new bra and blouse to put on, I took off my jeans and shoes and slipped into my robe. I went back into the living room and found Steve still standing there. He smiled as I entered the room. I went straight up and hugged him. I handed him back his coat and looked over his shoulder to see Becky in the room. He knows, doesn't he? I nodded as I pulled my robe tighter. She started to glow. I had to squint it was so bright. I see a long and happy future. Thank you for all you've done. Good luck. With that the ball of light faded and disappeared. I turned to Steve and jumped into his arms. I wrapped my legs around his waist and kissed him.